so thank you very much for having me today. Um, as you said, said one of the bright sides of uh, this thing that's happening now is that we can like get in touch from people from other parts of the world. So I'm going to um, give this uh, brief tutorial about how to do web scrapping using R. And I'm going to say um, a little things before. I'm, I live here in Valparaíso, Chile. I think it's almost straight line. <laughs> so, so we're going to have just started here. <laughs> um, Valparaíso is a city that's by the sea and it's full of hills. So for going up and down the hills, we use this kind of elevators. Um, people would, when people came here, they love to go up and down in them. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit scary, <laughs> but, but um, it's a very beautiful place if, if you want to came down here sometime. So um, I'm the organizer of Our Ladies Valparaíso and Our Lady Santiago. Santiago is the capital of Chile, just one hour and a half uh, away from Valparaíso. And I'm also the, the organizer of Latin Art Conf. It's a conference about art in Latin America. We run it in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. And soon we will add French as one of the languages because there are many people speaking French in Central America. And I organized some of the Saturdays down here also. And yes, that's the, 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 uh, the project we said was uh, the translation from R for, for data science to Spanish. Um, O'Reilly decided not to translate the book to Spanish. So the community, uh, we decided to do it. And now it's published online and everyone can read it uh, down here. There are many people that, so learning English here is um, not everyone can afford it. So it's a, a very big gap for people to learn R, uh, not having the possibility to uh, have access to these important resources. So that was the idea of translating the book. And we not only translated the text, but also the data sets. So we develop a package that's called Datos, that's data in Spanish. And it, translated, uh, it translates the data sets on the fly. And it's very easy to contribute uh, you, you just have to design a YAM file when to write the specifications for the translation. For example, if you want to translate ggplot2, we said, well, that's the source. The name in Spanish will be diamantes. And we also give the specifications for translating, for example, variables, like price is precio in Spanish, and the values. And we also translated the help documentation. So that means that you can access not only the data in Spanish, but you can also uh, access the help pages. So we start with the Spanish version and we're now developing a Portuguese version. So we're, we're going to have more packages in different languages that are not English. So we are always looking to develop more packages like this. So maybe some languages spoken in Africa can be the next packages with uh, translated data sets. So if anyone thinks this could be a good idea or is interested in that, you can reach me whenever you want. Yes, ah, I, I didn't say that, Maxine. I am a PhD student in linguistics, so I'm very interested in, in this kind of things of having more languages represented in the R community. So um, I think developing this kind of packages, I find it very important because, okay, English is the language that allows us to communicate between each other. Um, but there are other languages that are also important and that and, and seeing your language reflected in a package can be very encouraging for people to learn more about R. So if you think there's some African language that uh, could be included, that we can translate those, uh, the data sets to that language, uh, we can start that project. I think it will be a very good idea uh, to have projects that connects Africa and Latin America. So if someone finds this interesting, please let me know. So let's go to do some web scrapping using R. So we're going to uh, run two examples. Um, how we can scrap many pages, because sometimes we want, for example, something that's, uh, it's in 18 different pages on a website. So we're going to see how we can do that. 
And also what happened when what we want is scattered throughout the page in different parts. For example, there are many tables in a page and we want to have all of them in only one table. Sorry, many tables in a page and we, have, we want to have one table with all the data. So there are two important questions when you do a web scrapping. One is, could it be done? So if it's technically possible to do what you want to do. And the second is, if it should be done because there are many pages that you actually can scrap, but the people who designed the page decide that they don't want uh, the page to be scrapped. For example, if you go to Amazon, this is a page that you could actually scrap the information, but if you go to the terms and services, there are always, always very little here. For example, condition of use. If you search for words like crawler or robot, you can find that, for example, they say that you're not allowed to do uh, any data mining using robots or similar data gathering and extraction tools. So you can scrap Amazon, but they ask you not to do it. So you shouldn't be doing it. So it's important that when you decide to scrap a web page, uh, check the condition of use, uh, the terms of use, uh, in case you're not, for you to be sure that you're doing it in a very polite way. So for example, first I, I, when I was thinking about an example to this tutorial, I find that this web page could be interesting to uh, scrape the South African, and then I read carefully the terms and conditions and they say that in the rules of use that they don't want people to access in any automated means like spider crawlers or interfaces so we can do this but we shouldn't be doing it so I changed the example I don't want to <laughs> to show things that shouldn't be done so that's a very important question when you're doing a uh, web scrapping to see if things could be done technically, what package you need, but also if, the, if scrapping that web page should be done. Uh, if the people decide, uh, who develop the package want it to be scraped. So we're going to run through two examples. I'm going to do live coding. So um, I'm going to share this link with you on the chat. And I'm going to change to our studio. And I'm sharing the link right now. Give me a minute. Okay, so I think I'm going to increase the size. Do you read well there? Mm, it's fine. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to um, do live coding. So I'm going to create a new project first. I'm going to put it in my Our Ladies Meetup. Okay, so currently there's nothing there, but I'm going to put a script. Now you can see there's there, there is one more file. So this file is on Dropbox. So if you access this link, I'm putting it here on, on the chat. What you will see is something like this. Let me open my web browser. So this is the, the, 
this is what I, I, it's already written in the script. And if I, for example, do something different, I'm going to uncomment this. I'm saving the changes. If you update the page here, you will see that the comments are not there anymore. So everything I'm going, I'm writing here in the script will be updated in that link in case you want to copy or paste it on, or want to check it after the tutorial. And I'm going, I'm not going to delete this file afterwards. So you can came back to, to the script if you want it some other day. And in case you have uh, problems installing any of the packages, I create this RStudio cloud project that has them already installed in case you, you want to work over that project. It doesn't have the script, the, the RStudio cloud, it, but it has all the packages needed in already installed. Okay, so I'm going to comment these lines because the packages are already installed. I added here the tidy text package. In case we have time, we can um, explore some of the results of the web scraping we're going to do. So uh, let's start. Uh, the first example, we're going to um, explore the R open site log. I'm going to open the web page for you to see. So this is the R open site blog. They, well, they, R open site is a very interesting community. They develop package and they have this blog that they have run for, I think a couple of years now. And it's a blog that have 56 uh, pages of very interesting posts. So what I'm going to show you is what if you want to know what are all these posts about and you want, for example, to extract the titles of all the posts in all the pages. And then, for example, you want to uh, analyze which are, are the words they are uh, use, they use the most in this post. So one important thing to know is that when you, we're going to do web scrapping using the RVEST packet that came in the um, tidy, in Tidyverse. So what we need to do first is to um, identify in the web page which are the uh, tags that are used in the part we want to scrape. So a web page basically is, I'm going to open it in, this is the like the HTML behind this page. So when you do web, scrap, web scraping, basically what you do is like you extract all this content and then I'm going to zoom in. You extract like, you know, the text of the part of the web page that you're interested in. So everything in a web page is basically um, plain text, but what make it, makes it, um, um, uh, you know, visible like this way is that everything has a special tag and you also have, um, for example, the CSS that makes this tag uh, appear or be visible in a particular way. So when you want to scrape something, you need to know which is the tag of the part of the page that you want. So there are many ways of knowing how to uh, extract a tag. One very manual way is that you can go in your browser. There's always something called um, like tools for developers. Let me close this. It's always in tools, for example, and developers tools. And you can see here uh, the different parts of the web page. So for example, if I want the title, I should be, for example, exploring here, it get blue and start exploring inside until I get to the exact title I want. For example, it seems that it's here. For example, here I found that this is the tag. When, I, when I'm over this here in the right, 
the title gets blue. So this is exactly the part of the page I want. It says H2. That's one way to know which part of the web page I want. But there are some other tools and what it's called selector gadget. It's a Chrome extension. I'm going to put the link on the chat in case you want to install it. And it, what happened is that now I have it installed and here, when I click here, I can go through the page and it will, you know, it will highlight the different parts of the web page. So if I go here to the title and I click it, it would show me that it's H2. And here in the bottom of the page says H2, 2. And I can see which parts of the page have the same tag. So that will help me to know which part of the page I'm interested in. It's easier than going through, uh, through all the uh, HTML and start looking for the tag you want. So this is an extension that you can uh, add to Google uh, Chrome and makes very easy uh, the whole process. So I put the link there in the chat if you want to um, install it. So what we want to do is extract the information that is stored in the H2 tag, the titles. So th those are the two pieces of information you need. The, your web, the, the address of your web page and the tag, in this case, H2. So I'm going to copy here the link of the page. I'm going to put it also in the chat. And I'm going to check what happened if I change the page. For example, I'm in page one, I'm going to go to page two. And the structure of the web page is very similar. It's ropensite.org slash blog slash page slash the number of the page. So for example, if I change the two for 30, I go to page 30. So yes, I'm on page 30. So that's, that's what I need to know about the page. So I'm going back to our studio. So we're going to use uh, the harvest package. This is the one that you actually use for web scraping. This is the one that's going to go to the web page and retrieve the HTML. Uh, we're also going to use uh, dplyr for using the pipe and other functions for um, manipulating our data after we scrape it. We're going to use also um, a, a package that's called robot.txt. Robot.txt is a package that uh, allows you to ask the web page if it wants to, it wanted, it, uh, if the page allow you to uh, scrape the information. But not every web page is designed in a way that the, that information is on the robot.txt. So uh, you always need to check the terms of use or the condition of use of, of the web page. And then you can also check what says here. Sometimes uh, there's valuable information in the robot.txt file. For example, how many requests you can do to the web page in a certain amount of time. There are web pages that said, for example, you can scrap the page, but please um, wait one second between each uh, time you ask for information for the web page. So sometimes, sometimes web pages have th that information. And we're also going to use um, the janitor package. So the janitor package has one function that we're going to use that helps cleaning the names. That will help us uh, in the second example, but I'm going to uh, activate the package now. And in case we have time, um, we'll do some explore exploration of the, of the text that we scrape. So I'm going to activate the tidy text package. And also another package that's going to be very useful is uh, Stringer that help us uh, 
work with chart character uh, vectors because one of the thing one thing is you know uh, um, retrieving the information for the web page in this first exa first example the 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 data is very clean but sometimes you want to scrape a web page and you have to do a lot of post processing cleaning the the what the um, how the the data is displayed in the web page so we're going to use stringer and tidr for doing that and finally i'm i'm going to activate the per package because we want to uh, iterate um we want to scrape from the for 56 pages of the our open site block so we need to iterate throughout the uh, 56 pages and we can use a for loop, but uh, in this case, we're going to use the per package that makes um, very easy to, to iterate in, in this kind of examples. So I think those are all the packages we're going to use. Um, I also um, put here Polite. Polite is something like a wrapper of um, Arvest that makes um, all the process of web, of web scraping very polite. So I'm going to um, add afterwards to the script a, a couple of links about that package. So you can do all the web scraping throughout Polite. Uh, but I decided to use Arvest because it's like, Polite uses Arvest. So it's better to start using Arvest and then you can move to Polite if, if you want to be, um, um, you know, comply all the rules and manners for doing uh, web scraping. So first we're going to, uh, um, if you want to iterate through many pages, you first have to be sure that your script works. So we're going to uh, try uh, scraping the um, first page of the our open site block. So um, let's scrape the first page of our open side block. So, as I said, we need two pieces of information. We need the link and we need the um, HTML tag where the information we want uh, is, um, is in the page. So the link we are going to use is uh, arbenside.org slash blog. So we're going to create an object. I'm going to put it, um, this, this is going to be only the first page. So I'm going to put it title one, like the titles of the first page. And we're going to use a function that's called read HTML. And we give to that function the uh, URL of the page we want to scrape. So I'm going to run this code. And what we have now is an object that's called title one that is a list of two elements. So I'm going to click it here and take a look. So what we have here is all the HTML of the page. It's the head of the page, all the links, titles, and it's the body of the page. So usually HTML of a page ha has a head and a body and we have all the HTML of the page here. But what we want to do is to, um, extract only the information that it's on H2. So we're going to take our title one object and the function that allow us to um, extract the information from a specific tag is called HTML nodes. So to eight, in HTML nodes, the main argument is the name of the tag we want. In this case is H2. And then we have to tell to our um, what we want from that node. In this case, what we want is the text. So there's a function that's called HTML text. So by default, HTML, you have to give the, um, a, a, you know, the object you want to retrieve. And also there's a second argument that's called trim and it's always the default is false and is if you want to trim white spaces are at the beginning or at the end of the text, we're going to put it to true. 
and I'm going to run this. And what I get, these five titles, two months and two minutes, when field or lab work, automatic code, two months and two minutes, our website dev guide 0.4.0. So I'm going to just check in the web page. I'm going to the main page that it's number one. And yes, these are the titles, two months and two minutes, one field that works, automatic code, two months and two minutes, urban site dev guide. So this is the code we need to extract the titles from a page. So what we need to do now is to think a way of going through all the pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, like a very small function that basically has all these uh, steps within. So I'm going to put it get titles are open site and it's going to be a function and the idea is that we give the function a number of page for example page three and it gives us all the titles inside that page. So it has one argument that's page number And here we're going to do something that's um, recommended to do when you are scraping um, a lot of pages is that you use um, system sleep. That is a way to stop the execution of the code for a number of seconds, for example, two. We want that our function, for example, if we give the function like uh, five pages, it waits two seconds between each time it goes to the web page to, uh, to ask for the information. Why would it's a good practice to do this? Because sometimes when pages, um, the server um, realize there are many requests at the same time, uh, it could, sometimes it can block you. So usually you can wait two to five seconds. We're going to put two here because there are many pages and we're going to be waiting a lot if we would we, we put five. So I'm going to put just two. And the first we need to do is um, in our function, we have to create the link for the scraping. So I'm going to use the paste zero function. So the structure of, of our URL is that we have our open site at our blog slash page slash and then we have the um, page number. And then we want to repeat this exactly same thing that we did here, but with the link we have. So basically we want to do read HTML to our link, the link that created in the previous line. And then I'm going to copy paste this. So what we're doing here is um, creating this function so we can give a, num a page number of the R open site block our function will wait two seconds and then we'll start. It will create the link by pasting the page number to the space URL structure. And then it will go through uh, this function we tried before. So read HTML, extract the informa information of H2 tag, and then extract the text from that um, label. So I'm going to run my function. And I'm going to test it with um, one page. For example, get titles uh, page, for example, let's see page five. So you wait two seconds and we have here community call, urban site analysis, etc. We can check if you will want, for example, and go to page five here. and see if it's the same formation that we have. And it's the same for, for example, here's tidy and C and here's tidy and C. 
So our function is working. So what we can do now is give, if, give it all the page numbers we want. We already have the title of the first page. So we need um, from page two to 56. So there's a, um, no, not, a, well, it's usually, um, there's a question in the chat. It says, does every web URL have the same format? The link followed by page, followed by page number. Um, you usually find that format, but sometimes it may change. So what you usually have to do is to check, um, to go through some of the pages to see if the structure is the same or not. Um, but usually this is uh, something like very common. Sometimes you don't have the page, for example, and only have a number. Um, but what, what it, what is recommended that you go through, for example, some pages at the beginning and then, you know, start uh, trying with some numbers on the URL to check, uh, be, to be absolutely sure that you're going to, like, um, um, your function are go is going to find all the pages that you're looking for. But this is very common, a very common structure. You know that you have the base URL and then you have page and um, then the number. So we already have the... Um, Here's the title, we have title one. I'm going to save it. I'm going back to line 31. I'm going to save it as an object. Okay, so we all already have the titles from page one. So we need the ones from page two to 56. That may take us a little long. So I'm going to divide the work in two calls. I tried it in my computer and it, takes a couple of minutes. So I'm going to try with some pages before. So I'm going to make an object that's called title from two to 30. And I'm going to use the map function that will help us iterate. So I'm calling map and I want to go from page two to 30. And I wanted to apply the function that I just created get titles are open sign. This will create a list. So I'm going to add one more function that's called unlist. So it retrieves all the titles. It will create a list with one, um, the five titles from each page will be one element of the list. And I want afterwards to unlist everything on the list. So I will only have one vector of characters and to save this in um, one object. It's called title 2 to 30. So I'm going to run this and it will take uh, around a minute and a half. So you can do it with all the pages at once, um, but it was very long. So <laughs> I split the jobs into, um, into different calls to the function because um, if something happened, you know, the connection fail, everything you have to start again. So I prefer to split it. So after this one in line 50, 45, I'm going to call it again. This time from 31 to 56. And I'm basically going to do the same. going from 31 to 56, apply my get titles function, and then unlist. So it's still working because I'm, I add this system slip to seconds. So it goes to the page, extract information, wait two seconds, and then do the same to um, the other page. Okay, it stopped. So now we have uh, our object with the title of the first page and now we have another one that have 145 pages. So I'm going to just take a look. The head, okay, it's, they look like uh, titles from the blog. I'm going to check the tail. Okay, so this is what something similar to what I was expecting. 
So now I'm going to run the second part. And we'll have to wait um, about around a minute again. And then we'll have all the titles. Yes. Um, so the map, uh, the per packets have uh, functions that call map, emap, there's all a, fam a whole family. And here they're very similar to the apply functions. So they sometimes have um, a syntax that's very similar, but they basically do the same. So there are uh, as, uh, the same as the apply functions. There's a, they are a way of not doing for loops so that you can iterate through, through a couple of elements. So yes, you can use uh, lapply if you want to achieve the ex uh, exactly the same objectives. So we're going to have to wait a little bit more because it's working now. But this is a way that you can um, scrape information from many pages. So you, it's optional to do it like inside a function, but I think it's a good way because uh, then you can recycle this. For example, if this works, you can just tweak it a little bit and, and use it with another web page. And also it allows you to, um, you know, if I only want one specific page sometime, sometime uh, I can use a function for that. So now we have the uh, second part. You know, now we have title 31 through, uh, page 31 through uh, 56. So now we have all of them. Now I'm going to put them in one object. So I'm going to create an object that's called our open site titles. Sorry, I have a cat that, <laughs> okay. Um, give me a second to ask him to move. <laughs> hey. Sorry, he wants, he wants to participate. <laughs> um, So I'm going to create a, a new object that's called our open site title. And um, I'm going to um, uh, combine the three objects we already have. We have uh, title one, we have title two to 30, and we have title 31 to 56. As I said before, you can, if you want, run it this function. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, here is the package for, and he decided that he, that was for him. <laughs> so you can do this in one just call to the function, but as I said before, I split the job to not, um, because it's, it was going to be very, very long. So now I'm going to put them all together. So now I have one object with all the 270 nine titles of the packet. So we can see that we have the, the ones that um, at the beginning, the two months in two minutes, and we can check if we are not sure if everything went well, we can check here. For example, is invasive is the last title from the block and I can go to the page. I'm going to page 56. Ah, yes, this one is, the, is from 2012. So this one is the last one. So this is an example where, um, you know, all the text is very clean. We are not going to need to do any, um, you know, uh, data cleaning. That's not the usual. It's what happened when you only extract titles, but when you extract tables and um, things like that, it's going to be a little more um, complicated. So just as an example, I'm going to, maybe you want to know what are the mon most common words used in, in the titles of the R open site block. So I'm going to, I activated previously the tidy text package. This is not exactly web scraping, but we, we have this information now, so let's take a little look at what it has. So I'm going to, um, we have, what we have here is like a vector of uh, characters. 
with all the strings, one string uh, per title. So I'm going to make this a table with one column that's called title that will have inside all the our open sign titles. So now what we have is like a, a data frame. A table is a type of data frame. So the uh, tidy text package have a function that's called a nest tokens. A tokens is like the um, like the unit. It could be a word. It could be uh, two words. It's like the the unit that you, you're going to split your text in. So I'm going to use it, this unless token function. When we set and the two arguments are first the name of the column in of the um, words that are going to be split. I'm going to put it word. And where is actually the text you want to split? It's on title. So it will give me like all the words from all the titles of the web page. Um, here are in the order they appear, like two months in two minutes or open sign news. So if you want to know how many words, uh, how many times a word is, is used, you can, we can use the count uh, function. We want it to count um, the words and I'm going to put sort equal true. So it puts the one that have more frequency in the top. So something that usually happens is that um, you have this kind of words like articles, uh, conjunctions, um, prepositions. These are called, called stop words. So these are, are grammatical words or function words that uh, they don't convey meaning, but they're very useful to communicate. And sometimes in this kind of analysis, when you want to know which are the most common words, those are always the most common words, words used. So you want to strip it. And there's, you can use um, the anti-join function to remove stop words. They're called stop words in this kind of analysis because you want to stop the analysis there. You don't want to be considered. So now, we remove them. We have that the most common words is our open site, then it's data, package, community, software, research, review, call. And it, and two, it's, we can remove uh, the numbers if we want, but here they have this two minutes. Um, there was a title, two months in two minutes. It's the name of one of the blogs, uh, posts that they do about um, what things have been done in the community in the last two months. So I, I keep them, but if you want to strip it, we can put here in line 55. You can put, for example, a uh, strip numeric. And it will remove all the, um, all the numbers from the, from the list of words. So what we've done in this for example was to uh, scrape the content of many pages from a website and um, we here explore what are the most common words used in the titles of the our open site uh, blog. So this is a way uh, to solve the problem when you want to explore um, information from many pages. But sometimes what you want to do is to extract information from um, tables. And sometimes there are many tables in a page and you want them all. So we're going to do a second example. Uh, but first of all, if for example, you want to explore um, some words, use, you can use filter. For example, here is the table version. You can use filter combined with uh, the string detect function that allows you to detect um, words inside um, strings. And um, for example, I want to see what are all the titles that contain the word code, for example. And now I can see that there are four titles from blog posts that contain that, that have this word. For example, I can look for package 
Ah, there are a lot more. There are 30 uh, posts about packages. So I can here look for any word I want inside the titles. So the second example um, I want to show you is um, about um, extracting information that it's on a web page, but it's on different parts of the web page. I'm going to, we're going to use Wikipedia because Wikipedia allows you to extract information. And they have this, um, this article about a best-selling music artist. So they have information, for example, they have this, um, all the artists that have sold 250 million or more records, they are here in one table. Then from 200 to 249 is they are in this other table. And there are around, I think there are six tables inside this web page. So what if what you want is the data that, that is inside these tables and you want to combine it in one table. So you can have, so you can then analyze it in a proper way. So what's um, difficult about this is it that this kind of extraction will need a lot of post-processing because if you see here in, in Wikipedia, you always have these links, for example, that shows you, uh, for example, here's a year and says in brackets, there's a 10 because there's a reference that where they, um, where the, these informations come from. So when you extract this, you're going to have all these uh, brackets with number in your data. So uh, we're going to use a similar process. We, we, we need the URL to extract information. And we also need to know uh, which is the exact um, tag of the tables. Usually the tags for tables is table. So for example, you can um, activate um, select your gadget and you can, we can put here table and it will say there are 10 tables. And sometimes the tables here are called um, wiki tables. So if I look for wiki table, it will uh, put in yellow the six tables I'm looking for. Or I can just go and click the page, for example, and see which is the tag selector gadget is showing me. So you can select from a very specific, for example, uh, part of the table, or you can check for all the table. I click outside, sorry, let me try again. So there are different ways of doing it. Sometimes tables are always usually in a table tag. That's a more common. Wikipedia use dot uh, wiki table as a way to store their, their tables. And that's very useful because uh, there are many articles in Wikipedia that have this kind of tables with a lot of information that you maybe want to uh, retrieve and then analyze. So the robot txt, um, Function has a, a package has a function that we're going to try this time. I'm going to put a here a second example. So, sorry. So it got a function that's called um, paths allowed. When you put um, the URL you want to scrape, and it will, uh, if, if you're allowed to scrape the page, it will return true. And, but anyway, you also have to check, uh, as I said before, the terms of condition uh, of the page to be sure that you're allowed because this kind of, um, not all pages have this robot TXT uh, declared. But to be sure, uh, to be certain, please uh, always, you know, check the terms of use to be sure you're not doing anything that's not allowed. 
but Wikipedia allows people to scrape the content, so that's why we're going to use it in this example. So, um, we're going to do the exact same process at the beginning. So, we're going to create an object that will be called chart HTML. And I'm going to use the read HTML function. So I will bring with this all the, um, it will be exactly as previously, uh, a list object that has all the information of the HTML, the head and the body. And what we want to scrape now is the notes we want to, to retrieve is the dot wiki table. So in HTML notes, I hope we have to be sure because there's an HTML node that will catch only the first occurrence of your uh, tag and it's HTML notes that will catch all of them. So sometimes uh, if you misspell this function, you're only going to get one, one of the items you want. So we're going to use wiki table. And in this case, as before, we have to uh, tell R what we want from that table. And in this case, we want the table uh, as a table because it can extract, you know, only the text, like uh, strings of characters, but we want it to uh, preserve the, uh, the node as a table. So I'm going to save this in a new object that I'm going to call uh, charts. So I have now a list that have six objects and it's called charts. And what I have in this list is that each element is one of the um, tables I saw on the web page. So now I have the six tables, but there are elements inside a list. So what I need to do is to extract them from the list and um, put them all together in only one table. So I'm going to do this and we can do this also with the table uh, function. If I call table and charts, I'm going to have here, um, uh, now, it, now my, it is going to be not in the form of a list, but if a, of, a, of a data frame. And then um, what I can do is there's a function that's called a nest that allows us to uh, all these nested uh, data frames we have inside this table, it unnested and it checks the names of the different uh, variables and it, it will make a match. So I'm going to, it sounds a little bit abstract, so I'm going to do it. So I'm going to create an object that it's, will be called artists a chart. So I will convert this to a table. First, I'm going to check it have the table form. It's basically the list but going down. And I'm going to use this function that's called a nest. I want to unnest, unnest this object that's called artist charts and I have to set in which column I want to unnest and the column is called charts. Okay, so I'm going to take a look. I'm going to run it again so we can see, okay. So now we have only one table with all the um, rows from all the tables that we have, you know, in, in different uh, smaller tables. Now they're all in only one. But there's a problem here because we have artists, we have country, we have period active, we have release year, genre, total certified units, claim sales, and here we have release year again. So this is the um, kind of problem that you get into when doing web scraping that sometimes you get stuck like uh, lots of minutes to realize why you have this problem, why you have two release year columns. 
And if you look, uh, you will see that this one, this release here doesn't have, have a, it only has a space here. And this release here is written differently. So R obviously uh, think that those are two different columns. So I'm going back to the page so you can see. So all the tables have the same columns, but this one is written like this, release year with space inside. But this one said release year and have a, how do you say it, hyphen in English or dash? I always confuse them in English. Hyphen. So this one has an hyphen here. And this other one also has the hyphen. So it seems like, like the first one has it too. Okay. So the thing is the first one, they didn't put the hyphen between release and year. So for R, this is a different column. So for the first, all the data that was on the first table, that was this one, you have data for the release space year variable. And for all the rest, uh, you have all that information here in the release hyphen year variable. So to resolve this problem, what we can do is to change the name. When we have all the tables inside the list, we can change the name of the first table to be exactly like this one. So that will help us to, uh, the next time we unnest the information, there all the, um, the information of the release here, we're going to be only in one variable. So we need to solve this before, like in line 73. So just to be sure how all the names are, um, are written, I'm going to use the names, um, function sorry i didn't save here the let me add a names here so we can print the names okay so what we need to do here is to replace in the first chart this uh, name and put it this new one with the hyphen so what we have to um transform is this charts object that had the seven tables, the one we have here. So we have to go inside this first element of the list, that is the first table, and change the name of this uh, variable, the, the one about the release here. So what I'm going to do here is to um, rename in our object charts, we're going to edit the first element, the first table. So I'm going to use the rename function. So we want to rename inside this uh, object, that is charts one. So the new name we want is the one we have here, this one, release year, of first charted record. We want this to be the uh, new name. And we want it to replace the current name that is the one without the space. So if we check now, our first object. Now it says release year with the hyphen. So now if we uh, rerun this code in line 76 and then in line uh, 78. So now we have all the information in this one column. So the first time I tried to uh, scrape this page. I got stuck a lot of time, like trying to realize what was happening, why I was having these two columns. And usually it's small things like this, like 
if something is written a little bit differently, it's going to uh, like ruin the idea you have in the mind about how your TD data should look. So this is what we wanted. We have everything in one object. I'm going to save it. I'm missing an S here. Okay, here it is. So all our changes are safe. We can view the object. So you can see now that all the information that was in six different tables in the web page is now all in only one table. So this means that we can uh, make that uh, if we want to analyze this data, now we have it in one uh, data frame and now we can do things with it. The problem, as you might see, is that, um, as I told you before, you have a lot of this um, bracket number bracket uh, pattern because in Wikipedia you have a lot of uh, links to references. Uh, so what we need to do now is to uh, clean this table and that's always part of the web scraping process. So the, the first example was one of the cases when you have very clean data, but usually when you want to scrape things like tables and stuff like that, uh, you're going to have to deal with um, this kind of uh, cleaning. That knowing a little bit about regular expressions and for example, the stringer package or stringy package or that kind of uh, functions will help you a lot. So there is a lot to clean. I'm going to um, show you how to clean these uh, brackets in a couple of the columns, not in all. You can then uh, repeat the exact, exactly the same process with the other ones. So we're going to, uh, we're going to clean this. We're in this release here, we're going to remove the, this bracket number bracket pattern. And, and if you see, this now is a character vector. If we are able to remove this, uh, this pattern, we're going to be able also to um, coerce this column to be numeric. So we can then do stuff with the numbers uh, over there. So how we can do that? I'm going to save here the script so it will be updated. So we need to um, make some cleaning. And one first thing we may want to clean is the name of the variables. As you see, when you have a, a column that has a space inside the name or a special character like this one, for calling uh, that variable in your code, you have to use these back ticks. So a way to solve this is using the janitor package that have a very, very useful function that's called clean names. So I'm going to rewrite my object and I'm going to use this clean name function and you just give it the, your data frame. By default, it, it will convert the names to snake, the snake pattern. You know that um, in small caps, one word, and then the dash, and then uh, the other word. So if we take a look to artist charts now, you know, it changes the name. So everything is in small caps. You don't have spaces in between. It's very, very useful to clean names. If you prefer another uh, type of case, for example, camel case, the one where you um, put all the word together, but you have like the first one capitalized, you can uh, use that too. Yeah, I love, <laughs> I also, as much I love this um, package. I think it's, it has very simple functions that do, uh, like this very small things, but that can uh, help you a lot when working. Because sometimes you have, you know, this one only have, a, you know, seven columns, but if you have, I don't know, a data set with 100 different variables and other all written with no uh, pattern, you know, sometimes small caps, sometimes camel case. Um, this way you can have uh, all in the same format and that makes very, very, very easy to use. So now we clean the names. Now it's everything, it's a little more uh, easier to work. So um, I'm going to first, um, well, we have some very long names here. For example, let's take a look. 
I'm going to use the blimps function. Yeah. So, okay, artist is short, but we have these very, very long names, like total certified units from available market to release year of first chartered record. So maybe we can uh, make these names a little bit shorter because it's, it's going to be easy to work with them. So I'm going to uh, rename those those variables. So I'm going to rename in artist charts. So uh, this release here, we can put it, I'm going to put it, name it, um, release uh, first charted. Instead of release year of first charted record. And I'm also this total, total certified units from available markets A. I'm also going to rename it with a little bit, a name that, that's a little bit shorter. I can put it like um, here. Um, yeah, but total certified units. Let's see. Okay, it's easier to uh, work this way. Yeah, so I like the changes. I'm going to uh, rewrite my object, artists chart. So I save these changes. So I'm going to. Um, I'm going to fix this uh, released first year. I would, f I misspelled first. Okay, here. I have to, I'm going back a little bit because I uh, wrote, I did something wrong with the name of the, and then I changed it. So I'm going to run everything else to remove the object I didn't want it. Okay, now, now I'm fine. Let's check. Yeah, so the name was changed. So I'm going to fix first this release first. Uh, um, for the first started record because we now have uh, the year and this uh, this pattern that was the reference the link that was inside and um, now it's a, a character vector so I'm going to uh, turn it into a numeric vector so what we need to do first is to remove this pattern that it's a bracket number bracket so we're going to do that with um, a, a regular expression. So what I want to do is to take this artist chart object and we want to mutate it to transform it. So we want that this uh, release first charted column, we're going to use uh, uh, a function from the stringer package that's called a uh, string remove that will remove a pattern we give uh, to as one as the arguments. So we want to remove all the, um, we want to remove inside uh, our release, release first charted. So that we have to indicate which is the pattern we want to remove. So what we want to it to find is a bracket, uh, a number of digits, and then a closing bracket. So first, how we uh, tell R to find digits, there's uh, like a regular expression for that. There are many ways to write them. One is... <laughs> Sorry? Okay, so one is to, uh, 
it's called digit. So this will find any digits inside uh, this column. If we wanted to find um, one or more digits, we can use the plus. So it will find one, two or more. But we not only wanted to find digits, because the, num the year numbers are also digits, we wanted also to find these brackets. So we want to find digits that are inside brackets. The thing here is that brackets are also a special character uh, in regular expressions, so we have to es escape them. We have to tell R that we want to find a bracket, like literally a bracket, and uh, not a bracket as in inside a regular expression. And to escape, we have to use the backslash. So if this works, uh, what we're saying is that we want to change something in this release first charted variable, that we want to remove all. Every time uh, R find in this column, this pattern. And this pattern, sorry, this pattern is find literally a bracket. Inside this bracket, you want to find digits, one or more, and then you want to find the closing bracket. So if I run this, if you, you see it removes, removed from this column all the these brackets we have here. So now that that's it, that is solved, now we can uh, mutate this column to be not a character uh, column, but a numeric column. So there are two ways to do this. We can call mutate again and say that you want that release first uh, target is equal to release first uh, target as numeric. Or we can uh, surround the, this function from the as numeric function. So we can set here that we want that, we want that this column to be as numeric after removing all these things. So if I run this, so now we have the release first charted column as a double, that is as a numeric column, and we now have all the years. So now this variable, we can do something with, with this. For example, we can arrange it in a numerical order, or we can make decisions about this uh, variable um, in a proper way, because now it's what it actually is, that it's a double. We can even change it for a date format, uh, because it was, it was a character and it wasn't a guard, because it was a year. So we can do this, uh, I'm going to save this. I'm going to rewrite this object, artist chart. And now it will be, will have the column in the uh, proper way. So we can do uh, something similar with the other columns. Uh, for example, with claimed sales, you also have this uh, brackets. Uh, in period active, you can also change them. And you can use exactly this uh, same code to do this uh, if you want to clean also these other ones. And, and something else we can change, for example, is that the genre column has many genres inside. Uh, let's take a, a look to it. For example, if we... Um, For example, in genre, you have also this pattern that we can clean. And you have for each artist, you have all the genres uh, that um, are associated with that artist. But for example, if you want to take a look, uh, what about, you know, uh, blues rock? Uh, you can have uh, all that, um, you can filter very clearly because you sometimes have more than one uh, genre inside a cell. And maybe you can have, uh, you want to have them only in one. If you want, for example, to filter only the hip hop artist, you can do that uh, properly because you have all this information mixed here. 
So we're going to clean also this, um, this column. We're going to remove the, the brackets here with the numbers, and then we're going to split the, each of these rows. So each artist has a row for uh, each of the genres that are related to him or to, to her. So I'm going to take our object and I'm going to do something very similar as we did here. We're going to mutate genre. We're going to use the same string remove all pattern. And we want it to be this. I can actually take this same function here. So this will uh, remove from genre all the, um, sorry, I make a mistake here. That's a problem with copy pasting. Here, so now we remove all the um, brackets we saw previously, this one. And what I want to do now is to uh, separate for each artist the different genres. So first I'm going to save this. I'm going to rewrite my object. So artist chart. So now the changes are saved. And what I'm going to do now is to uh, separate these rows. So here each artist has one or more genre. So we can separate it, separate them using the separate rows function. I have artist chart and we can use separate rows and we want to separate the genre rows. And we have to indicate what, what is the separation pattern. And what we have here is that we have a space, a slash, and a space. So now if you see, you have, for example, now you have the Beatles two times because they're you have rock and you have pop. Now you have Elvis in three different rows because you have rock, pop, and country. Or for example, Michael Jackson has like a lot of genres uh, associated with him. So we have pop, rock, dance, soul, rhythm, and blues. So this function is very useful because it allows you to uh, separate information that sometimes is in one row and you want it to have it in different rows. So for example, now uh, if you wanted, for example, to make a um, a GD plot to see how many artists you have in this list from the different genres. Now you have the data in the format that it's proper to appropriate it for do that kind of uh, visualizations. So as you see, uh, sometimes the more difficult thing about web scraping is not uh, retrieving the information, but to clean it after because uh, depending on the web page you're using, uh, Sometimes you have a lot of these things like uh, small patterns that are uh, like mixing with the actual data you want to analyze and that can make the work a little bit difficult. But learning a little bit about, uh, for example, regular expressions can, can help you a lot in that uh, cleaning process. So I think we're on the time now. Um, so I wanted to show you these two different examples. One, when, when you want to retrieve information from one site that is in different pages of that site and how uh, designing a small function can allow you to make this process easier. And the second one was about tables that sometimes uh, that is the format you want to scrape. And what happens if the information is in different tables? And in this case, uh, we scraped Wikipedia and it was in six different tables. And uh, thanks to the unnest function, we can, uh, could mix them. Um, we were able to mix them in only one table. And then with a little bit of um, regular expressions using the string package, we can remove some of the um, 
the patterns and the character strings that were there, but they were not actually part of the data we wanted. So if you want to keep cleaning this table, you can repeat this process of removing the, um, this pattern inside this column, or you can try, for example, doing it with a for loop or with map to remove this pattern inside uh, all of this column. So I'm going to, uh, I saved here the um, one last time the script, so now it's updated in the link I gave you. And tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some comments here in the script because I didn't wrote anyone uh, to explain in a more detail what we did, everything we did here. So if you want to come back to, uh, to come back to this script, I don't know, a couple of, uh, on the weekend or next week, there will be an explanation here of all this, um, of, of all these decisions. So I think that's all for now. Um, I'm, I'm also going to add here in the end, I'm going to put it some references. Uh, there are people around the R community that, that have written um, very good tutorials uh, with examples about doing web scrapping. Uh, for example, Miles Salmon has very good uh, blog posts about that. And also uh, Bob Rudis has some interesting blog posts about the ethical part of doing web scraping uh, and what you can do versus what you should do and how we need to like be responsible uh, programmers when doing this kind of task. So, well, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for having me there here. Um, and well, let's keep in touch in Twitter or in different platforms we have for the R community. And as I said before, if anyone is interested in thinking about the idea of having data set in other packages, uh, please let me know. I'm that, that kind of project I'm very interested in. So I'll be very happy to help develop that kind of packages. Ah, there's a very good question. If we can scrape data from PDF. Uh, yes, there are, it, it depends on how the PDF is format. Sometimes you have, for example, a PDF that used to be like a Word uh, document that was turned into PDF. In that case, you can have, uh, I'm going to put it, there's a package that's called PDF Tools. You can use that package. But if your PDF is, for example, uh, our image, uh, for example, that someone scanned the image, then you have to do something that, that's called a, o, a optical character recognition, OCR. And there's a package that's called a Tesseract that's very useful for that. That's a, that's a, a thing I love to do for my thesis. I have to work with that a lot because I have to, I have some document, very old documents I have to uh, digitize and I have to use a lot of turning PDF that were images to um, a text that's actually analyzable. Uh, yes, I don't know if, if there's, there's any other question. Hey, no, thank you for connecting here. Thank you. Thank you, Riva. Uh, is there any other questions before we sign off? I'll ask a, a quick question. Riva, have you done any, because um, we're in this COVID pandemic, have you done any web scraping of COVID data or are you not, not working with anything like that? Oh, sorry, about what? Of, of COVID cases, so no, no, I haven't. No, no uh, but I think it will vary. I'm, I haven't done it because now I wasn't at the end of the semester, so I have a lot, like a lot of things. But I think it will be very interesting to compare, for example, how this um, these have been treated, for example, in news from different countries, uh, or for example, comparing the news from one newspaper with another one. So I think there, uh, that kind of data will be very, very interesting because there's a lot of data about, I, I don't know, the number of cases and stuff like that, but how, the, how people are talking about uh, COVID, I think will be very, very interesting to, to scrape. For example, comparing how the, are the news from countries that are, are, have been very successful, like um, 
dealing with the with this uh, with this problem versus countries where uh, I don't know uh, things are not going as well as 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 expected. So there's there's a there's an idea there for you to start using these tools now. Mm -hmm. I do have one one other question, Diva. When you um, use the HTML nodes, in the first time you used like just H2, and in the second time you had the dot wiki table. So the dot yeah, some, classes, is that correct? Yeah, the dot is because uh, that's the way uh, Wikipedia uh, called the, uh, the tag in, in Wikipedia is called dot wiki table. So some tags start with a, a period and some others are like the traditional, you know, H1, H2, H3. So that's very useful about selector gadget that can allows you, you know, to click and see the exact name of the of the of the tag. There, then you can start doing some more specific things. For example, if if for example we only wanted three of the six tables we we saw in the Wikipedia page, we can select them inside R, but we can also select them uh, in the tag. For example asking to retrieve only the third, fourth, and fifth nodes, for example. That more specific things you can do uh, also with that, that package. Hi, Riva. Hi. Even, uh, for uh, different states of a country, the Wikipedia has got uh, different uh, um, web pages giving the COVID data, but the template is the same. So can we use uh, uh, some kind of this process uh, to get data from all those uh, pages? Yeah, sure. You can, for example, if the, the, the data is in the same, uh, the same pattern, the same structure in all the pages, then you can design a function similar to the first one we did. When what changes is the, the URL from which going to scrape the data. And, and then all the process could be the same. So for example, this example I, I did with the, the sales of uh, the Wikipedia example, I have used the same code to scrape other pages of Wikipedia that have many tables inside because they always all uh, dot wiki table. So once you uh, solve the way to scrape uh, one page, any, any, any other that have the same format, you can, um, apply the same process. You can create a small function or you can create a for loop that allows you to go uh, through all of them. Thank you. So Maxine asked uh, if there is a way to scrape Wikipedia by language rather than page. Uh, for example, if there's I, I'm not sure if I understand the question, but for example, you have a page that has been has a version in different language and you want to scrape all of them. That's uh, Hi, Riva. Thank you very much. Uh, so to, to clarify, for example, in South Africa, we have a problem in our African languages. We have very small corpora. So I'm thinking if you could web scrape off of Wikipedia or, for example, if new sites in different languages, for example, Zulu. Um, is yeah. it possible to search by language uh, rather than page? Yes, for example, I think the pattern, let me share my screen again. I think the pattern in Wikipedia is that, um, let me, give me one second to open the... to open a browser. I think, for example, the pattern in Wikipedia um, is that you have the code of the um, language in the first two part of the URL. So if I wanted to do something like this, maybe what you can do is in, in the our open site example, you, we created the links using um, change it only something at the end. But here you can create the link like changing this part. So you can put like the code of the, let me open another one. For example, this one is in Esperanto. 
it changes it changed this part so as we use uh in our open site we change the last part of the url here you maybe you can use uh, the paste function but changing inside this part of the url the code of the of the language so that will help you to create new uh urls so for example if you want to create a parallel corpus having the same page in many different languages you can try to search uh, the web pages in that way and for the last part um yeah you you should have the like the list of i i'm not sure if if there's a way to uh retrieve i think you can do that uh, mainly for language that have very small uh um not many pages like for example this that is, this one is in esperanto um I think I will have to like uh, get a deeper look inside Wikipedia, but I think there should be some way to to get all the links so you can scrape all the data to create a corpus in that language. But I think this is something that could be done. But one way to to like to trick uh, trick the the links is this first part of the of the um, of the URL because the language is uh, it's declaring that part. Cool. I think we've answered all the questions. Um, thanks so much, Riva. Thank no, you. thank you. And all the effort you put into teaching us, you're very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you yeah. around. <laughs> yes, and thanks everyone else for joining us. Um, we really loved having you all here. And until next time. Yeah, I'm going to put off the